Good day, my name is Mark Malore. I'm with the Malore Law Firm, and I'm here today to talk to you about construction law, specifically the filing and recording of mechanics liens and what your rights are in terms of getting paid on a project you work for. Many times I have contractor clients that have been working their, their heart out on a particular project only to get stiffed by the general contractor or the owner uh, in terms of their payment. And typically I find in construction matters that contractors uh, get squeezed, especially subcontractors working for general contractors, get squeezed on their, their bid price that they originally bid the project for. Uh, so that the general contractor can make some more money for itself or so that the owner can save money in terms of its loan or maybe they've gone over budget in some area and they can squeeze uh, you in particular so that they don't have to pay you. The problem with that is that it uh, is a breach of the contract that you entered into in terms of the contract price for entering into a, uh, the, the scope of work for construction. And secondarily, there's a way to prevent that from occurring. One of the most effective ways I find on getting my contractor clients paid is something we call the mechanics lien, which I'm sure you've heard about. Now there's a lot of uh, misinformation about mechanics liens, and if you don't follow the proper procedures and technicalities in recording one on a particular project, then you uh, erode your right to get paid on the project. So the first thing to remember is that in recording a mechanics lien on a project, Depending on what kind of project it is and depending on who you contracted with for the project, you want to make sure that the formalities for recording your mechanics lien were done properly. So the first inquiry that I want to talk to you about is the question of who did you contract with. For, for purposes of mechanics lien, if you contracted directly with the owner of the property, then you don't have to file and record or send rather by certified mail return receipt requested a document known as a California 20-day preliminary notice. You don't have to uh, send that by certified mail return receipt requested to the owner of the project, the general contractor on the project, and the lender on the project if you're contracting directly with the owner. If you're not and your contract is directly with a general contractor or a, a subcontractor of uh, the general contractor, then you need to uh, send by certified mail return receipt the 20-day preliminary form. And it, on it, it'll have uh, the, the contract price that you entered into. It'll be mailed to those individuals that I mentioned. And they'll be put on notice with that form uh, that you are on the project, working on the project, and you expect to get paid your contract price. That is a prerequisite if you're not in direct contractual relationship with the owner on the project of recording a mechanics lien. Because if you try to record a mechanics lien without having proof of the uh, 20 day preliminary notice being sent out, your mechanics lien will be invalid and the subsequent owner of the project or the general contractor will be able to cross complain against you if you try to file a suit later on to enforce the mechanics lien to have that dismissed or have you remove that from the property profile. And if it is removed and you've waived the, the time period with which to file the uh, or send out the 20 day preliminary notice, you're basically eroding your right to get paid under that particular mechanism. Now you still have a breach of contract action, but I find in my experience that the most powerful way to get you paid and paid quickly, and many times without a lot of legal expense, is through the mechanics lien mechanism. If you're not in direct contractual relationship with the owner and you need to file a 20-day prelim, then you need to make sure that your mechanics lien is recorded within 90 days of you ending work on the project or 30 days upon completion of the project. So make sure that your mechanics lien, once you're done with your scope of work in your project and you've filed your mechanics lien or filed your 20-day preliminary notice or, uh, with uh, certified mail return receipt to the uh, contractor, general contractor, the owner of the project, the lender on the project, that you file your mechanics lien after ceasing work within 90 days. If you don't, you waived your right to the mechanics lien, file the mechanics lien, and you want to put that on the property so that your mechanics lien rights are not time barred and you're able to recover on the project while there's still some funding with the fund, the lender on the project or before the general contractor gets paid in full, you make sure that you get your rights uh, to get paid before any of those entities get paid. 
Those are some things to think about. Uh, I want you to consider those. If you have any further questions or some particular uh, matters that you're concerned about, speak to your attorney, local attorney, or you feel free to contact myself. Uh, you can reach me at 951-222-2100 or on my website, malorlawfirm.com. Thank you for your attention. Good speaking with you today. Thank you.